You know, it was only just announced at Cisco Live in Orlando, and I'm excited that we get to cover this here for you because it is a really big deal. It's DNA Center Platform. Now, that distinction here flew right past me the first few times I was hearing it because most of us know that Cisco DNA Center is the foundational controller and analytic center at the heart of Cisco's intent-based network. It's been out for over a year. We featured multiple shows on it. And chances are high that you've uh, already deployed, tested, or just at least researched just how many benefits you could get from this complete reimagining of the network. Well, DNA Center is where you interact with the entire network. You can, you can see with it what has been really four big categories showing right there in the interface. Design, you can provision, policy, and then of course we rolled out assurance right after that. Well, now there's a fifth capability. It's platform. So DNA Center platform opens up everything so that you can do exponentially more with all of that stuff. So customers, partners, developers, third parties of any sort now can continue to add even more value to the entire system. And it's not a new product or, or a licensing tier. It's part and parcel of the value that you get with DNA Center should you choose to leverage it. But I think you will. So we have Adrian here from the DevNet team to show us some examples of how all of this can be used. First up, Saurav from the DNA Center platform team joins us to click into platform and see just how deep the rabbit hole goes. All right, welcome. We're in the lounge with Saurav Prasad, who is technical marketing engineer with the DNA Center team. Uh, but specifically, we've been talking about this platform, um, which actually would have flown right past me if I wasn't, well, I wasn't paying attention at first. You guys were saying platform, and I was like, yeah, DNA Center is a platform. And you're like, no, Rob, it, it, we, we do all kinds of new stuff that we're really proud of. So how do you begin to explain it? So uh, close to an, or almost a year back, mm -hmm. we launched the Network Intuitive Campaign, and this was at Cisco Live Las Vegas, uh, where we launched the Cisco DNA Center. Now, DNA Center is your centralized operations console that dramatically simplifies the management and orchestration. Everything of we your, do is through of, DNA Center. Yeah, yeah, of your enterprise network, and that includes your routing, your switching, your wireless networks, all of that. Okay. Um, and then the next step was to launch, you know, DNA Assurance, which now gives you insights or context back from the network. Right. Right. So this is what something happened earlier this year at I think Cisco Live Barcelona. And what we launched in Cisco Live Orlando was the DNS Center of Platform. And this is where we are opening up all of the capabilities, the workflows, and the functionalities of the DNS Center okay. to our developers, to our partners, to our customers, so that they can integrate their IT processes or their own applications directly with the network, which okay. is why the DNS Center. Okay, so first, just to make sure no one's uh, unclear about this, this is not a separate product or, no. or something we're, we're upselling on or something like this. This is part and parcel now of DNA Center with the latest release. And, uh, and this is a set of capabilities that have already existed that we're now providing access to so that more can be done. Is that a way of putting it? Yes, this is part of the DNA Center product. Okay. So people might have already uh, gone through the design policy provision and the assurance workflows. Right. We have now added a fifth workflow there for platform. And okay. that is where we expose our APIs, our integration APIs. Um, so for example, if you see here, uh, this is my DNA Center mm -hmm. uh, landing page. We have the design, policy, provision, assurance. And if you come further down, now we have the platform ah, thing. Yeah, that's new, right? that wasn't there before. Okay. Yeah. And now if I click on that, that gives me all of the tools that a developer needs to integrate with the DNA Center. So keep in mind, we already have those in the DNS Center, but you could do it via the user interface. So you go and click uh -huh. and create a sites, add policies, provision them, and get data back from the network and view it in the assurance screens. Yeah, that's a good point, because DNA yeah. Center is not some big monolithic application. This is, this is, this is microservices running in containers on yeah. Kubernetes, and yeah. you know, we're, it's, it's everything that we're actually starting to expose now. So you're really, you're giving access to things that were inherently already there, but you've made, you've done a lot of work on them. That's why they couldn't come out immediately. Yeah? Exactly. So if we, if we want to expose all of that functionality via APIs, via, I mean, SDKs. Right. And the reason why we haven't released so far was we wanted to make sure that these APIs are ready for consumption by mm. the, our developers. Some of these APIs were already there, uh, but we wanted to clean it up and make it sure that it's available uh, in the right format for our developers to use. Okay. Um, so if I go back here to the developer toolkit, uh, you'll see we have APIs, and so these are the APIs that expose all of the workflows like software defined access, uh, assurance, um, application policy, software image management, all of these APIs are there. 
We also have APIs to integrate with your IT process systems. So something like IT service management, ITSM, okay. or your IPAM, IP address manager, these APIs are available. So now I can integrate with some of these external IT process systems. So this is, this is where we are able to integrate the network with your end-to-end -end IT process. Excellent. So, so because in a lot of situations, customers who may be moving to DNA Center may already have some some mature processes, relationships, and operational things that they do now. Yeah. This can work right along with them, or if they're building in that direction, because that's just where a lot of people are going now, and developers are are working with network folks and they're sharing their knowledge. This yeah. becomes a way to potentially do that. Yeah? Exactly. So, so, so just take an example of assurance. Okay. DNA assurance is able to identify a lot of issues that's happening in the network. This could be with devices, with clients connected to your network, or applications that are running in the network. But do we really expect a network admin to be sitting in front of the DNA center console 24 hours uh, all day to just to see where is the issue popping up? What we want is this issue pops up, and then there is a ticket already opened up with your ITSM system, so that's all automatic. Now, we provide the APIs for that, right. and then we have also built some reference applications that lets you integrate with some of these systems, like ServiceNow, for example, but the APIs are open, and okay. our developers, our partners can use these APIs and build their own integrations if they want to. Oh, excellent, okay, because it really is about access to a depth of information that we've proven is actually more available. You know, the network's been talking for a while, and it seems like with DNA Center, we're listening to it a lot better. Yeah. Um, but as it gives information, you can also act on that information external to DNA Center yeah. and make more intelligent decisions. So you're really moving and you're kind of taking the analytics and that information and, and, and providing more automation capabilities yeah. that don't necessarily have to be Cisco-based. Yeah. It's just that we have some of the gold information that you want to sift through and use. Exactly. And now we've made that available. Absolutely. So you mentioned intent APIs and integration APIs? Yes. Yeah. So, okay. so we have two kind of APIs. The APIs for uh, external applications, so okay. your business applications, your network applications. And so we are using our intent API infrastructure for that. So we have two kinds of APIs that we expose, the network APIs and the business APIs. Oh, okay. Now, we have been talking about the intent-based networking. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all about expressing your intent, your business intent. Right. right? So we do it via the UI today. We also want to give you an API where you are able to express your business intent. Okay. There are a lot of software developers out there who are experts in Python or some programming skills, but they are not necessarily CCIEs. They don't understand how the network behaves, or right. they don't know the you know, nuances of doing a wireless deployment. Uh, so we cannot expose them to those individual APIs to do that because they might not be aware of how to do that. So uh -huh. when I give them a business API, a business intent API, I let them express their business intent via the APIs, and then the DNA center takes care of the rest. And by that I mean it might call five, 10 different APIs under the hood, uh -huh. which will actually do the actual provisioning on the network. But the developer doesn't need to know that. So doesn't a lot of the work we've done is kind of creating these super APIs, which are a composite of other things. And I know we don't call it that, but actually that's a good way to understand it. Exactly. Because yeah. to our developer audience, this becomes something, it's gonna do a lot of things on your behalf so that you can get what you need faster. You don't need to understand it. Now I'm curious, do I have control, is it from a network person? Uh, is there still role-based access control to the APIs and such like yeah. this so that you, you're not opening up your network and just going, oh, I hope they don't mess anything up. Yeah. You still have all the same controls. Yeah, right? exactly. So nice. before we use any of the APIs, you have to get a token from okay. the DNS ah, center. Okay. And those tokens are based on your role-based access control settings. Okay. So if me as Soro, I, I only have observer privileges on DNS center, I'm only able to do some reads. I cannot do any provisioning. And if I want to make an API call, that follows the same rules. Oh, that's I can only make API calls to get information but not do any provisioning, for excellent. example. Okay, so we've got yeah. APIs, but you've also got, what, SDKs and some other Exactly. Other yeah, so we have SDKs, uh, which will allow us to support non-Cisco third-party devices. Really? So, oh, okay. As you might know, DNS Center today has support for pretty much every Cisco device for yeah. the enterprise campus and WAN. What we don't have support is for the non-Cisco devices, and there are technical reasons for that. We don't understand those devices well enough to write a device pack for that. Yeah. So what we are doing is we are bundling that device pack as a software development kit, an SDK, mm -hmm. and we're giving it out. And our partners, our um, channel partners, our system integrators, they can use these SDKs right. and build their own device packs oh, I bet that's for non-Cisco yeah. devices. And we already have some partners who have you know, kind of started working on that uh, and they have already showcased some of this at Cisco Live last month. Excellent, okay, so, uh, so the, the APIs, 
uh, which, is, which is a big bulk of it, but the SDKs as well, which is interesting. Yeah. I didn't realize we were opening that up. Anything else? Yeah, so, and we also have the, uh, the um, events and notification framework. Okay. So for example, um, as I said earlier, DNA Assurance is able to identify a whole bunch of events. And this is not only assurance events, there could be some automation or compliance events as well. Right. So for example, I have done a provisioning on 500 devices in mm -hmm. my network. And say for whatever reason, it fails on some devices. Now, do I expect the admin to come back and keep checking whether it has succeeded? Because some of this might take in 10 minutes, 20 minutes, maybe an hour. Right. So we can send a notification out to an external webhook. And this is, these are the REST-based webhooks where okay. I just send out this notification. And this is detailed information so about- you can input that anywhere exactly. you want, a previously yes, existing and, system. And then a developer can take that uh, information and they can then send an email out of this, send a text message, whatever they want to do it but we send out a generic notification to wherever you want it to be sent. Okay. All right, now you've got some resources within that uh, platform link yeah. on DNA Center for uh, additional documentation exactly. and, and interacting and, and making all this stuff easy. But we also have the DevNet community, I'm a little bit fanboyish, yeah, yeah. so I'd put on the shirt for them. Yeah. Um, is there anything else we need to understand though about the platform before I dive into some of the DevNet side of things? Sure, so um, on the platform portal, yeah. uh, you have the developer toolkit. So we talked about APIs, integrations, and we also have the reporting capabilities. Again, and, and, you know that's part of the integration um, uh, API flow. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I dig deeper into the APIs, for example here, and you'll see we have all of the APIs that are supported today documented on the portal itself. Okay. So we'll have APIs for site management. So here we have APIs for plug and play, software image management. Any of your assurance APIs show up in the Know Your Network section. So we have APIs for devices, clients, sites, and all of that. Okay. And all the other APIs are here. If I go to connectivity, for example, these are APIs, and we'll add more to this. Uh, for now, we have support for non-fabric wireless. Um, so this is where you can create your SSIDs or you know, delete SSIDs from your network. Uh, let's drill down further into just one of these APIs. So if I go to the create SSID API, you'll see I have all the documentation. Anything that a developer needs is documented here. We have the URL, what wow. type of method it is. It could be a okay. post, get, delete, put method. Uh, we have the header parameters. We have the response codes. We also have the model schema. So uh, anything that a developer needs is here. I can click, click on the request schema or on the model you know, response schema. They're all here. So it makes it really easy for the developer to start using it. Yeah. And last but not least, we also have a try it button. So if they really want to try out the APIs here itself, they don't need to write a single line of Python. So you're not playing on the network? No. So, oh, so, wow. so, so they can actually run those API calls from the DNS center itself just to test out, right? I mean, this is, huh. of course, when they are building their own integration or their own application, they will do all of that. They will right. write their Python or whatever other language. Yeah, but that can be a little boost of confidence just to make sure you understand exactly, exactly what does it need as an input? What am I going to get as an output? Is that what I expected? Or exactly. I need to do something else before I'm playing yeah. with anything? Is it, do you using sample data from the network? Uh, no, so that? actually, this will work on the network itself. Uh -huh. But what I am saying is you don't allow, you don't oh, need to execute. write a Python script for that. You know, ah, it's all gotcha. running within okay. it. So you don't okay. have to get a well, token like because part. now that you're on the UI itself, Excellent. you've already authenticated yourself. So you don't need wow. to get a token because otherwise you will need to get a token uh, before you want to run this. Yes, you have to do a lot of documentation, don't you? Yes, yeah, so all of that is <laughs> documented here. And what we've also done is shown all of that and referenced all of this into DevNet. So if you go to the DevNet yeah. portal for DNS Center platform, all of this is there. And I think we'll be talking about that That's in the subsequent do section. Next. Yeah. Listen, man. Thank you for all the work that your team does on that. Um, didn't believe you guys have been hiding this from us here for the last year as we rolled out DNA Center, but this is really going to open it up to a lot of people. All right, I'm going to jump over for DevNet and see Adrian. Thank you very much, Rob. Thanks, Rob. All right, Adrian, thank you so much for waiting for me. I am a big fan of DevNet. I wore the shirt as a, as a favor and as a shout out because uh, we've had Hank Preston on the show. Um, I love everything you guys do because you guys have created a revolution, if you will, with helping us understand the relationship between uh, networking technology, which we really pride ourselves in, and just the openness and the capabilities that we do when we work with developers closely. And you guys are bridging that divide. Um, so I love DevNet. I like what you guys have accomplished. But you're also the key to what we're doing with DNA Center platform, right? Right. That's right, Rob. Uh, first of all, thanks a lot for having me over here. Yeah. It's great to be here. So uh, before we go into DNA Center Platform, maybe let's have a quick recap of what DevNet is. Maybe there's some people out there that are not familiar with it. That's a good point because there's a lot of resources. Right? You've got some of this stuff up here. So how do we get there? What, where, where do we get started? Right. So you would want to go to developer.cisco.com. Okay. 
there's where everything is, right? So we've, like you've said, we've been working for, for five years now, almost. Right. Thinking about it, wow, it's just time flies, right? Uh, so we have a bunch of content here. People should be already familiar with it, but if they're not, there's learning labs, there's sandboxes, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Yeah, because I, well, I went on there to play because I went to thing when I first met Susie and I was getting my head wrapped around what the whole organization was building towards. And it was building fast and it was like, I've got to brush up on what is an API? What is uh, you know? What is REST? Right. What does that mean? And and you guys spent a lot of time in, in, in the beginning, and you're continuing to building these learning tracks. But now you've added videos, I think, from from Hank. Yes. Uh, and then the sandbox. This is really cool, and that blew my mind at first because it you you get to play. Yes. So you guys allow us to play with the code and understand it, and that's also part of the training. But it's also part of hey, I just want to try something out. Exactly. Okay. Yes. So you get access to sandboxes if you don't want to order necessarily equipment or set up a lab or for you yourself. Or you just can't. Yeah. Or you just can't yeah. in some cases, right? Then yeah, you can definitely use our sandboxes. You just need to be a dev member. That's easy. That's all it takes. Yeah. It's all free. So then you get access to the sandbox. Excellent. But you guys will continue to build them. But those. yes, that's well, a great point. Okay. Yes. Just There's actually been a, a couple of things that we released in Orlando this year for Cisco Live uh, 2018, right? So. We have the code exchange, first of all, and then yeah. the ecosystem exchange is right there. Okay, right? those two so, things at the end, all right. Yes, code exchange basically is a, a platform that we give our uh, community members uh, a place for them to start collaborating, to start submitting their source code for the applications that they're working on. And so assuming I knew what I was on. doing, I thought I built something cool combining whatever, various things. I do the, the coding and testing, and I could write it up and publish it in here, and other people could use it, and they don't have to build from scratch anymore. Exactly. That's nice. exactly the point of it's code like exchange. like GitHub? It's actually, that's a great point, because it's all running on GitHub. It's okay, it's running on GitHub. Okay. Yes, it's, uh, well, okay. it's pointing to GitHub okay. for, for all the repos, but it's uh, one central point in which we're trying to get different GitHub repos right. so that people can access them uh, in one central point. Oh, but the nice place is you go through here and then you know it's it's part of what's going on with Cisco. It's going to apply to the things you're trying to do. Right. So show, so show me what that looks like. Yeah, so if actually it's right here, a shortcut for it. If you go code exchange, just click on it and you get to see here, uh, there's gonna there's a lot of projects out right. there, right? Already, and this has been launched, like I said, a, a bit more than a month ago now. Yeah. And there's already hundreds of them, and we keep adding more uh, on a weekly basis. Okay, so they're rated right? and all the things you would expect. People can comment on them as well? Exactly. People, uh, but then you can filter down and find exactly what you're looking for or search. Right, uh, that's a great point. We have, for DNA Center platform specifically, we have a link here for all the projects pertaining uh, to the DNA platform. Center platform. Okay. Exactly, yeah. So uh, like Saurav was saying, we have the SDK here if you start working, uh, start working with the SDK in different languages. And then what I want to go into is actually um, host onboarding, which for a network, oh, it okay. it's right here. Yeah. So in this case, I'm just going to show what we're planning to do with this, with the onboarding piece is whenever you get access to new devices that you've added to DNA Center, and you might want to configure something specific, like a VLAN on an interface, right? You want to change it, or a description, or whatever you want to do, you can build templates, what we okay. call them in DNA Center, and then through the API, call the templates and apply them automatically to different devices. So that's part right? of the API access is to those templates that, that Sir Rob was mentioning, because there's a lot of different APIs and access they've built. Exactly. Okay, that's so you exactly take this fine. code to get you started, so you're kind of starting a step ahead already. Right. Okay, so, so how do we take it from there? Yes, so from here, you can view it on GitHub. Uh, like I was mentioning earlier, you have a link here. You can see the repo, um, small description, and then how to, right? How to use it, how to clone it, what's the requirements. For this specific one, we need Python 3.6 and above. And then DNA Center has to be 1.2 or above, the one that has been launched platform. in less, yes, platform. And then um, also the RBAC that you guys were talking about, For right? role-based access have control. To have, okay. You have to have an account that actually allows to do um, this type of specific calls for this okay. specific application. Okay, so you clicked on GitHub, you download, and then kind of like a cooking show here. We're already up and running because everybody knows how to download and run a file, but what are we looking at here now? So here, um, I have my Python virtual environment set up, okay. like for the requirements. I have Python 3.6 running in here, and then I'm in the folder with the actual 
code that I downloaded. So gotcha. let's have a look at it, right? Okay. Let's, uh, let's see what it can do. So to run it, I do that. And there's a couple of options here, right? So uh, this application, specific one, can do uh, several things. You can get a device list of all the, a list of all the devices that are being managed by DNA Center, okay, right? So like an inventory type thing? Yes. Okay. And then the interfaces on specific devices from that list. Mm -hmm. And then you can also get a template list, right? Basically, what we're trying to do with the templates with DNA Center is that we're trying to automate mundane tasks, like, uh, right? You have like onboarding, like onboarding, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You yeah. have a brand new device, and you want to configure VLAN interfaces or right. on a specific interface. Because right? IoT, we're doing that all the time, and gosh, we're doing it for minor devices we never thought we'd have to worry about, but yet we want them on the network safely in their own VLAN, ideally. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. That's a great example, Rob. So you get a list of the templates, and in our case, let's see what templates we have on this DNA Center um, appliance that we have here. So if we do a template list, what's happening now, the script is reaching out to DNA Center platform through the API and gets a list of all the templates that are available uh, on this specific okay. instance. Right. So we see here we have four of them. Uh, just change time zones, very simple one. Network device onboarding is the one we're actually going to call in our script here. Okay. And we're going to configure a specific VLAN on an interface on one of the switches that are being managed by DNA Center. So the template tells us what we need and what we're going to get back, so we have a quick overview, and that's based on DNA Center. That wasn't obviously wasn't part of the script. This is the script getting it for us as the next step. Correct. Okay. The script is getting it and is displaying it in nice format so that it's nicely and readable yeah. for us. All right, let's go into the onboarding one then. Yeah, so let's run the onboarding one for a specific interface. And I'm connected here to the switch that we're going to apply the change to. And let me, let's see an interface 10 gig 114, let's say. And we see here is just basic configuration. There's no VLAN configure at this point, And there's also no description on the interface. There's nothing. So now if we go back to our script and we apply the Network device onboarding template, the target, we have it right there, it's the Catalyst 9K switch, and then we're configuring, in this case, VLAN 3000. Uh, the description is going to be TechWest TV, because, you know, Why we're on it TechWest TV. Yeah. And uh, the interface that we had a look at, the 10 gigabit okay. Ethernet 114. So if we run the script, it's going to reach out to DNA Center, right, through the API. It's going to push these three parameters in that specific template. Uh, go reach out to the device and apply the configuration to the device. And I can see obviously when you talk about a big network and you talk about doing that kind of stuff smoothly over time, obviously the big thing is don't manually have to do all this and potentially introduce who knows how many errors, because uh, this is actually simple in terms of the number of things you could be doing, but I like this example. Yeah, oh, so, so we've got a response. Okay. Yeah, so uh, it says in progress, but I'm pretty sure it's uh, already applied. If we check the interface now, there we go. So we have the description. We have VLAN 3000, the one that we configured, and then the, the switch port is access mode, right? So this is just one example of what you can do through APIs, right. DNA Center platform, and the breadth of opportunities that are being opened with, with APIs. Yeah, right? that's a challenge, picking out exactly what are we going to focus on here, because I was going through uh, things you guys were doing at Cisco Live from the multi-step process of, say, uh, uh, setting up temporary SSIDs. Uh, we're working with partners with this information to be able to do things that were complex or time consuming. Now they can be done instantly in, an, in a, a way that where errors are not introduced, which thus makes the network more stable. Um, and this really opens things up in a lot of ways that we probably can't even predict, I would assume, because this really does bring in a lot of smart people now and all the developers that we'd like to continue to play and, and say, hey, I got a better way to do this. Well, now you got a way to share it, code exchange. So right. developer.cisco.com is where everybody needs to go. Yep. Yep. Tell you what, I'm going to close this out. Stay right here one second because i got a few private questions for you just a moment. But stay there. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Obviously, there is no excuse for not digging into developer.cisco.com. Dig into here because there's ways, no matter what your current situation is, there's no excuse for not being able to learn exactly how much this can do for you and the way we can now uh, continue to bridge the relationship between developers who are intelligent and incredibly smart on one side with network engineers such as many of you on the other side. There's so much we can do together, and now we've got tools to be able to do it as well. So go online, get that education curve going. There's so much more information there uh, as well. In fact, the videos and everything else these guys are doing complete. But always, thank you for watching TechWiseTV.com. All of our information is there on the screen. Appreciate you watching this. We'll see you on the next one.